Hi everyone, welcome to this focus lesson, which is all about my method for creating curls, which is slightly updated from the technique that I used about a year ago. So the most important and easiest way to create curls is by getting the base and the gradient right at the start. So I'm going to begin with the initial base layer where I want to break the image down, so the curls down into dark, medium, and light tones. So for the darker areas, which you can see quite clearly in the middle of this section of curls, I'm going to use a medium brown mixed with just a little bit of black to just deepen it a little bit at the bottom. So this is my Brown Earth 5 from Unison, which is a lovely medium brown, as you can see. What we want to do is just roughly add this where the deepest roots are. Don't stress about getting any shapes of curls in at this stage. It's just about creating a nice base and map of where the shadows are and the light areas are situated. So as I mentioned, I'm adding a little bit of black in here just at the bottom where it's darkest. And then for the areas around it, which are more medium in tone, so anywhere basically that's not obviously light and not obviously dark, I'm going to use a Natural Earth 10 from Unison. If you don't have this tone, then another similar one from Unison is a Brown Earth 4. So I'm just applying this around that darker brown that I added in and the black as well. So avoiding the right of the section, as that's where the lighter curls are and just at the bottom on the left as well. So it's going to go from dark in the middle of the section to a little bit lighter on the left and then really light on the right. So on the edge of that tone that I just added on the right here, so the mid-tone area, I'm going to use a light beige tone. This is a brown earth 3 from Unison. So you'll notice in the photograph it doesn't go suddenly from dark to light because that's not ever really what happens in first. So we do need a transitional tone in just to help the two areas to merge together a lot more naturally. And then for the light area on the right, I'm going to use a Natural Earth 18 from Unison, which you'll see is that little bit lighter than that light beige that I just used. So taking my sponge now, I'm going to blend all of those tones together. So when you are working on a portrait and you're looking at the dog's head, there's always going to be slightly lighter sections where the light is hitting hardest and then your darker sections as well, particularly around the mouth. I always find the, the fur's darker there. Between the eyes as well, where the fur's are a little bit thicker. So this is quite a good tutorial to kind of teach you how to do those darker areas, the medium areas, and then those really bright light areas. So these tones I'm using in this tutorial are my go-to always for cream, golden, and any light colored animals. I never actually use anything different. They're just perfect for a lovely warm base just to help to bring the fur to life. I personally do like to get an initial base layer blocked in with around three or four tones like this. And then once that initial base layer is down, I then start to really warm up the areas and obviously start to lift them if they need to be lifted. I just find it gets a little bit complicated if you try and pack everything in in the first layer at the start. So this way it's less pressure and it just gives you a really nice head start. I know it can stress you out probably a little bit because it's quite hard to see how it's going to look at the end. I mean, looking at this, you wouldn't even know that it's curls at this stage, but bear with me and I'll show you how you can use the space and start to transform it. And it's actually pretty simple to do. I do find it easier than kind of mapping out the curls to start with and sort of tearing my hair out and getting too bogged down on each individual one. So that's the first layer down that I just talked about. What I'm going to do now is start to thicken it up. So start to get a little bit more strength in those tones and also just start to cover the paper a little bit more as well. There's a lot of grittiness going on, which we don't want. So starting with my Natural Earth 18, that slightly lighter tone. And then my Brown Earth 3 on the edge here and just where I placed it at the start as well. It's going to help to make these tones a lot stronger. So just giving this a soften with my sponge. 
it's important to get rid of any evidence of paper before you start to add any details. So make sure you thicken your tones up with another layer like this. So I'm blending on this side now, and then I'm going to apply another layer of this tone, but start to get the shape of the curls in roughly. So because I've got that initial base in place now, I can start to kind of begin to map them in, not stressing too much about them being exactly like they are in the photograph. It's just picking out the kind of the rough shapes and the ones that, that kind of the main curls and the direction that they're going in. So just a few sections on this side and then just softening that into the paper. So as I mentioned, I'm not really marking in the exact curls, but just pulling out some of that rough structure to give me a little bit of a map so I can start to define them a little bit later on. So a little bit more of my natural earth 10, that darker beige tone. So just on the edge here. And then my black at the bottom here, just making that a little bit darker. Pulling it a little bit upwards here. And then also my brown earth five, that dark brown tone. Again, just starting to pull out the rough kind of structure here. So just defining the darker areas a little bit here. So where you can see a little bit more of the darker roots showing through, I'm just pulling this tone out there and starting to get some of the edges of the more defined curls in. Some at the top as well. Try not to overthink this layer. So using my sponge, just softening all of this in now, try not to eat too far into the lighter areas that I've got in there with my sponge. I'll just zoom in a little bit here for you to see that pigment sort of going onto the paper and going into the layers around it. So working a little bit of the excess pigment into the lighter area on the left, but it's not so dark that it's going to kind of deepen it too much. It's fine to get a light layer on top like this, but not working it all the way to the right as that's where the really bright first sits. So I don't want too much contamination going on there. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that natural earth 10 here, just to deepen it a little bit, just to make sure that transition between the dark on the left and the light is a little bit more gradual. And then what I'm also going to do is start to get a couple of additional tones in, which will help to bring even more warmth to this fur. So this is a natural earth four, which you'll see is a lot brighter. And I'm really just adding a tint in here to brighten it a little bit. And as I say, just get an additional tone in for realism. If you don't have this, then you can use something similar or a pastel pencil in sort of dark okra or sienna, any of those yellowy tones, just to bring a little bit more vibrancy in here. So another additional tone I'm going to get in is a Brown Earth 21 from Unison, which you'll see is a nice bright cream tone. It's got a little bit of a hint of yellow in there, so perfect for this fur. And again, I'm just applying it on this side to brighten, but also get another tone in there to bring it to life. 
And then what I'm going to do now that I've got my main basin blending in place is I'm going to begin to be a bit more precise and start to really bring out the structure in my curls. So taking my Brown Earth 3 from Unison for this. So on this side, just pulling these rough kind of curls out. So on this side, it's a little bit lighter the first, so I'm using my Brown Earth 31. So just the rough direction, really try not to overthink it. I know it's quite intimidating, all of these curls, but just pick out the basic shape. And just blend them in with your sponge here, just to start to get some kind of direction in there, and then we can really start to define them in a moment. So using the side of my sponge as well, just start to kind of pull out the rough details of hair and that's going to help to start to thicken up the fur. So now that we can see the rough map of curls, what I can do is start to get some more vibrancy into them with some nice yellows. So I do always like to mix my base tones and tint areas just to help to make the fur nice and bright and vibrant. So starting off with a dark okra from Stabilo, I'm picking out the areas in the curls in the photograph that I can see the most yellow going on. So particularly on the right of this section and there's a little bit at the top as well that I've just added in there. So the base as it was, was great, but if I went ahead and worked my light hair details on top, it would still look a little bit flat and like it's missing something. So I've really kind of learned over the, the last few years to begin to add more vibrant tones in, in the stage between the initial base with your kind of three or four tones and then those final hair details. It does really make a difference. And I've definitely noticed a change in my portraits since doing so. So a little bit here as well, just where I can see that hint of yellow. And then using my finger to soften that in. So not using my sponge anymore as I've got the main bulk of the blending in. And I haven't added too much pigment here. So there's really not that much kind of soften into the paper. The sponge does often eat quite a lot of pigment. So, and it does shift it quite a lot, which is obviously what you want for your main base stages. But for this, I just want to rub it into the paper, but not mute it too much. So I'm also going to add a golden okra from Stabilo in, so another additional tone to help to bring this to life. And you'll see this is a lovely bright yellow tone. So exactly as I did with the dark okra, but apply most of this on the right here, where it is brightest. So with these vibrant tones, when I apply them, I am pulling them out in the rough hair direction. So make sure that you kind of do adhere to the map that you've got in place.
So adding another additional tone and now this is a sienna which is quite similar to that dark okra but a little bit less dark and it's just another additional tone to add in to help with the realism. So again just applying this where I've applied those other tones just mixing them in next to it. So a little bit here as well. And again, just giving this a soften with my finger. What I'm also going to do at this stage before I start adding my hair details in is deepen the dark areas up a bit more and just start to define the edges of the curls at the bottom where their shape does stand out a little bit more. So starting with a black here, darkening the base here. It's nice and dark at the bottom here. And then as I get further upwards, switching to a Bista from Stabilo, which is a nice dark brown tone. So starting to pick out the structure a bit more so at the base of each curl at the bottom here, so where those roots are. So stopping when I get about halfway up, I don't want to work too close to the top as it does start to get lighter there. So it's mainly dark at the bottom and the middle of this section. So curving them round this curl here. Just a little here, but just stopping as this is quite a dark brown. So I'll be using something a bit lighter on that side in a moment. But jumping to this side, it's nice and dark here. So adding plenty of this tone in here, just on the edge, pulling it inwards in between those two sections of curls. So as I mentioned, I'm going to switch to a slightly lighter brown. This is a burnt umber and I'm starting to work it a little bit further along this side. And it's also a little bit more yellow base, this particular tone, which is perfect for the right of this section, which is more yellow based. So just picking out the edge of this curl as well. just the top of this one and then over to this side just where the divides are in the curl and then as we get even lighter as we get towards the right of the section i'm going to switch to a bista from faber castell which is a lovely medium yellow tone this is also going to help the dark brown to transition into the sort of mid to ends of the curls where they're a bit lighter, a bit more naturally. So adding plenty of this on the edge of the dark brown. And then giving that all a soften with my finger as it's looking a little bit odd at the moment. It needs to be softened a lot and just blurred and mixed. So don't be alarmed. I know it, it's looking very ugly, but I mean, I don't know any base stage which is particularly aesthetically pleasing. So really working the pigment outwards with my finger hair and into the paper.
So I'm just going to add another layer of my Bista from Stabilo, that dark brown, just at the bottom here. As I've been blending a little bit, it's got a tiny bit muted naturally. So just pulling out my dark hair details a bit more here. So curling them round, really getting that shape in. Just another soften with my finger here, just to work it into the left of the section here. And then over to this side. And then a little bit more up the top here, just making sure I've got the ends of those tufts and up in this area. And then a little bit more curling round here, really starting to shape this one in particular. A little bit of a trickier shape this as it kind of curls round quite dramatically. But just taking my time and always checking back in with the reference photo. So a little bit more up here as well, starting to get this shape in. And then using my Bista from Faber-Castell again, just to make sure that dark brown does soften into the lighter fur surrounding it a little bit more gradually and less dramatically. We don't want any dramatic tonal changes in curly fur. It should all look really nice and soft and natural. So I'm going to add a little bit of dark sepia from Faber-Castell in as well, just at the bottom here. Just coming up from that dark black at the bottom there. So just as another additional tone to add in. So just starting to darken this up a little bit more. And then taking my burnt umber, I'm going to just define a few more curls on the left here before I continue. We want to make sure the base is exactly where we want it before we do add those details because once you start adding the hairs in, it's going to be hard to re-add a shape or tweak a shape. You want to make sure all of your curls, that sort of the hints of curls and the shapes are mapped in and you're confident with their placement. And then use my black to really darken up this edge here. So it's nice and deep and dark on the left here. And then just softening that in with my finger. So now that we have a suitable amount of dark hairs in there, 
and the depth is looking good, I can start to add in my lighter hairs. Now it's important not to do the stage until you're happy with your dark areas, like in the middle of this section. And they're nice and deep and dark as there is not much going back after adding your hairs in. So very tricky to darken those areas up once you have all these details in place. So I'm starting off with a dark flesh from Karen Dash, which you'll see it's not super light, but it's a lovely warm tone. It's actually, I mean, the name indicates what tone it is. It's quite a fleshy tone, but it's actually brilliant for light and golden colored fur because you do often get very subtle pink and fleshy tones in there as the, the dog's skin is actually pink. So you often get a slight kind of hue that does show through and sort of pass into the curls. So I'm just working them in here at the bottom, leaving lots of gaps just to make sure we do have that nice deep dark base showing through. So I'm just starting to map out the individual tufts at the bottom here. And just before I do continue, I just want to add a little bit more dark base here. Didn't quite get that mapped in at the start. So just making sure that has a bit more shape there. So just with a burnt umber from Faber Castell, just softening it in with my fingernail. And then continuing with my dark flesh. So really beginning to map these in into those areas that I've got in place already with my sort of rough base. So I'm only really applying this tone in the darker areas as this dark flesh tone, it's not going to show up in the lighter tufts. So on top of the lighter base tone. So just from the bottom up to the middle of the section here. So very light in pressure and by using this pastel pencil light in pressure, it's making sure that the, the hairs aren't too thick when they come out. We don't want anything too fat, basically. We want these hairs to look very kind of wispy and have lots of dynamic movement. So that's going to help the fur to look like it's not too stiff and it's not too flat. So I'm making sure that the lengths of each of the hairs isn't sort of exactly the same as the one next to it. Just making sure they're quite random and not uniform. So we want the, the fur to look obviously quite natural and fluffy. So if they're all kind of straight and all perfect, it's just not going to look right. As I mentioned, I am leaving gaps, but I am bringing a few ends into the dark areas just to make sure that it doesn't look bald. And obviously this fur is very, very fluffy. So you're not really going to get any areas that are completely bare. So bringing some ends in here and there and lots of little random ones just to make sure this coat is nice and thick. So as we start to get a little bit lighter, I'm going to switch to a slightly lighter tone than the dark flesh and also a little bit more yellow in tone. So we can start to get more of that gorgeous golden hint in the fur. So this is my golden ochre light from Stabilo which isn't too light at this stage. So perfect to begin to work in this medium to light base up here and down the sides as well. So like I did with the dark flesh, just starting to pull out these curls here, making sure my hand is nice and fluid, not pressing too hard, kind of barely touching the paper actually. So just a few down into this section, it's quite dark, so we don't want too many. I always recommend holding your pastel pencil slightly further up the barrel and that does help to loosen your hand and it just makes sure that the hairs don't come out as thick and as hard. And then over to this side, so plenty here because it is lighter, but I'm not condensing them too close together yet. So I am going to be adding plenty more layers in order to lighten the fur. But for now, it's just about getting this initial map of hairs in 
in the first layer so that I can start to really thicken it up. So I've just applied a layer of those around the dark flesh. And then as we start to get into the lighter fur, I'm going to switch to an ivory from Faber-Castell. So we don't want to apply this tone too heavily to start off with, as what's going to happen is you're going to begin to wash the fur out. So I'm going to start with this, just a thin layer, and then I'll jump in with another tone of hairs shortly, just to continue to build the fur up, thicken it up with lots more hairs, but not lift it too drastically yet. If you add too many of these ivory hairs and just these ivory hairs to begin to lighten it, it's going to look very two-tonal. It's just not going to have as much realism in it. You want lots of different tones in. So just one initial layer of this to start off with. Starting to build these in quite simply in the areas which are lighter, so particularly the tips of the tufts. But I'm also going to build some down here as well. If you notice in the photograph, it is, although this area is darker, there is a tuft coming up here that is quite light. So curving them round here, keeping to that sort of rough map that I've got in place in the base stage. So again, I'm trying not to overthink this, just like the base stage. The good news is we have got an initial map in place, so it's basically just following that. So really putting these hairs out, I'm not working too far down into the kind of the depths of the tufts themselves. We do want there to be some depth in that area. So some kind of darker base showing through, which we've got. But if you add too many ivory hairs on top, it's going to kind of lighten it. So you can bring a few ends down, one or two, but don't condense your hairs too far down into the base of the tufts. So some little random ones as well. Don't stick to every tuft exactly. You can work some out as little random ones in different directions and that all helps with the natural look of the fur. So the danger of using too many really light hairs too soon and too condensed together is you'll lose depth and the illusion of thickness. By applying other hairs made up of different tones, you can still thicken the fur up, but not lighten too much at the same time. So we want plenty of hair layers before we get to the final highlights. You can see it's really starting to come together now. So I'm going to switch to another tone to begin to build the thickness of fur up. This is a gray three from Stabilo, which is another perfect tone to add into light and golden fur because it is quite warm based, even though it is a gray, it's a warm gray and it's getting some light hints in there. 
So in even in golden fur, you do get these subtle grey hints. You'll see it's not really standing out too much. It's not doing anything too drastic, but it is just adding that other kind of additional subtle tonal change in there. That's going to help to make this look more realistic. So I'm not applying this in the really light areas. It's mainly in the middle of this section and on the left as well, which is a little bit lighter than the right hand side. So curling them upwards here, exactly the same technique as the other hairs that I've been adding. It's just a different color that I'm applying here, but exactly the same method. So still leaving gaps in the base at the bottom of the tufts where the roots are and obviously leaving gaps where each individual tuft is. So you'll see it's really coming to life now instead of kind of stressing about working on every single individual curl and getting bogged down for ages on each one uh, it's very simple just to pull out each little tuft like I'm doing here not stressing about making it exactly like the reference photo you know every curl doesn't need to be the same your client is not going to notice if one or two are not in the right place Obviously, make sure the direction is right in terms of the direction of the curls on the dog's face. And if it does have any kind of unique ones, ones that are longer than others, etc., then do pay attention to those. But in general, just make sure that you acknowledge the kind of the main shapes and the main ones that are going on. And then you can just wing it a little bit with the ones surrounding them. So up here, I'm just getting the general direction in, but not really paying attention to making them really defined curls. I do often find if you define them too much and it starts to look a little bit too structured and a little bit too kind of abstracty and a bit too modern. So I like to keep it nice and wispy like this. So really going round the rest of the fur here, filling in gaps, making sure I've got some nice round and wispy ones, some nice long ones as well going on and some little short ones at the bottom. So lots of random ones, lots of flyaways to make sure these curls look nice and natural. So I've got that layer in. I'm just going to continue with my ivory now. 
So building a few more curls into the lighter section. So I'll be paying particular attention to the ones on the right and generally the tips of the tufts as well, where they are that little bit lighter. So really curving these ones round here, starting to make them look nice and wispy. I try not to talk too much for this layer because there's quite a lot to get through. It's just about you kind of keeping an eye on where I'm placing these. So at this stage, it's just about making sure the fur is looking nice and dense. So I'm really building my hairs up here to thicken up the fur. And in turn, that's obviously lightening it. So we want to get to the stage where it's nice and bright, this fur, like the photograph. So we need a few more layers to go before it is looking like the reference photo. But it's all about working gradually. So just filling in lots of these gaps that I have in just by pulling out some nice curly hairs. So really concentrating on the tips of these curls where they are lightest. So this side as well, you'll see how that base work has made such a difference to these curls because the darkness really helps to make the fur look nice and thick. So those roots, they need to be nice and deep and dark and that's going to help the curls look a lot bouncier, a lot thicker. So that's why base work is so important and getting that gradient in. So dark, medium and light. It's obviously lighter on the right, noticeably darker in the middle and then sort of medium on the left with some hints of light. But because I got that nailed at the base stage, I don't really need to do too much tweaking at this stage. It's just a case of layering my hairs up. So really starting to apply lots and lots of hairs, but I don't necessarily need to kind of darken areas too much because I've got that nice base in there. I probably will go in with a couple of darker tones just to make some of the curls a little bit more defined, but in general, it's looking really, really nice.
So I'm going to add a few more hairs at the bottom here. So just switching to my darker tone for this, my dark flesh from Karen Dash, just in the deep and dark areas, just making them a bit more hairy. And then like I did with the gray three from Stabilo, I'm going to build some more hairs in to really begin to thicken it up even more. But this time I'm using my yellow base tone, which I used earlier, my golden okra light. So I'm adding it in again, just to make sure that yellow tone is still showing through really nicely, but it's also another really nice tone to help to fill in any gaps without kind of lifting the fur too much with one tone. So as I mentioned, if you lift with too much ivory or too much white and no other tone, it's going to make the fur look too white and too washed out. So we do want a lot of vibrancy in there, even though it is light colored fur. So I'm about to add my white hairs in a moment. So getting the majority of the gaps blocked in before I do. So taking my titanium white from Stabilo next, I'm going to start to brighten this fur up. So like I did with the ivory, I'm working this on the tips of the tufts where they are lighter and I'm trying not to eat too far into the depths of the curls, so down the base. You can bring one or two down, but make sure that they're quite individual ones. Make sure there's no sharp divides between your dark and light areas. We want a gradual transition. So plenty on this side. So not just sticking to the tufts that I have in there, I'm working some random ones in as well as I've been doing all along. So this side as well, just taking my time.
and then I'm going to take a more highly pigmented white. This is my Chinese white from Karen Dash. And I'm going to use this to add some more white hairs in, but this one is a brighter white. So it's going to show up a little bit more than that titanium white, but I always like to have both in there when I'm building fur up because I always say you need to build your highlights gradually. So plenty of lighter, more muted tones before you get to the white. But even when you get to the white, I still like to use a more muted white and then a brighter white just to get a contrast in with those bright pops. So almost like the shadows. So with my blacks, I have my Creta color, which is my really dark black for the real depths of areas. And then my normal black. So my Stabilo black, my Faber-Castell black, which contrasts with that. So you've got the dark areas and then you've got the really dark areas. So it's the same with my whites. I just like to get a nice subtle contrast in there. So with my Chinese white, I often don't use it unless it's a really bright area. So I don't use it as much as I do the titanium white. I use it a bit more sparsely because, again, you don't want to wash an area out too much. So I'm applying this all over this section of curls, but concentrating them more on the areas which are noticeably brightest in the photograph. So I'm not applying as much as I did the titanium white because we've already lifted the fur quite a lot. So this is more about just getting some real pops in there in certain sections to help to make them look more three-dimensional. So if you get some light bouncing off some curls, it makes them look obviously like they're rounded. So the light is kind of hitting a small section on the curl, which is a little bit more raised. So it's sort of closer to the light. So I'm going to stop there. It's important to build the white highlights gradually. Always the danger of over condensing, which can make the fur look too white. So what I'm going to do now, before I do come back to another layer of white, is I'm going to build some more ivory in. So I've just reviewed the curls and there are a few gaps going on, which I just want to fill. So the gaps are making the fur look a little bit sparser than I want. The, the photograph, they're quite thick and they're quite dense, aren't they, and compact. So instead of using the white, because I don't want the fur to look too 
white, <laughs> too old and white, is I'm using this ivory just to fill in a few of these gaps and just generally thicken up a few areas that need a bit more detail. And then what you can do, if you really want to pick out some of these curls and make them a bit more defined, is take a brown tone, like a Bista from Stabilo, and just pick out a few areas. But I would be very careful doing this. It's only really if there's a few edges that aren't looking quite as strong as you want. You see how this doesn't look that natural when you apply it. I mean, I only do it here and there. I don't apply it all over my curls and all over the edges of my curls. It's just in a few areas, but because you've already got that base in place, a dark base, you shouldn't need to do this too much. I'm just picking out a few areas here for some dark hair detailing, but not necessarily to darken my areas, just to get a little bit of definition in a few places. And then taking my black, I'm just going to darken up this area on the left here, just a touch. Just defining the ends of these curls a little bit more. Again, I'm not really doing this too much. It's really kind of just deepening what I've already got in place a little bit more. But you don't want to do this too much as it doesn't look particularly natural if you do it all over. So just in a few places. Just a little bit here, very, very lightly. I'm not pressing hard at all with this pastel pencil. And then I'm going to go in with another layer of white. So just starting off with the edge here, just muting that black a little bit. It was just looking a little bit too strong. So just toning it down a little bit. And what I'm doing at this stage is just by applying another layer of this white, just lightening the fur up a little bit more and obviously just helping to thicken the fur as well. So I'm just going over the areas which are brightest in the photograph. I'm also just adding a few more individual little hairs here and there just to make this look extra fluffy. And then taking another tone of brown, this is my Burnt Umber, which is a little bit lighter than that Bista from Stabilo. Just a bit more definition in the curls here. Just at the base there, 
Again, not too much and very, very light in pressure. So I'm going to stop there, happy with that now. And I'm going to add another layer of my Chinese white. So just going back to that to build in some more hairs. So really pressing a little bit harder now, just to make sure that the white is starting to really pop out. So I'll leave you in peace again. Same process as the last layer of white. So I'm just building more hairs and really starting to lighten this and adding lots of little free flowing ones in as well.
So one more layer of my ivory, just to bulk it up without applying too much white all over. So in a few gaps which are a little bit darker or any areas that have a little too many white hairs going on, you can just pull out some ivory ones just to contrast them. We want some brighter ones and some more muted free flowing ones as well. So for it to look nice and thick, we don't want too many gaps going on. And it's also important not to make the curls too defined, as I mentioned earlier. You're always going to have these random hairs breaking outside of the curls, even ones that are very compact and very, very defined. So a little bit more defining with my black on the edge here. So plenty more here as well. and a few into the middle as well, just to pick out a few more edges. Try not to go too over the top on the right. I'm adding a few up the top here just to darken this area a tiny bit, but mainly keeping to the middle and these sides here. And then final touches, I'm going to start to tint my curls a little bit. So taking a Sienna from Stabilo, just going to run the sides of the lead, which is very yellow based, just in a few areas, which if you remember, I added some of this tone in at the start and it's just pulling that vibrant yellow hue out a little bit more. So towards the end, I always like to do this. It just makes sure that any areas that do look a little bit washed out, you can just make them a bit more vibrant and pull out a bit more color. So we don't want him looking too white and too old. We want plenty of that vibrant yellow tone in there to make the curls look nice and golden. So just in the areas which are noticeably yellower in the photograph. So I'm going to mix a little bit of golden okra light in here as well, just as an additional tone in this curl. And then some golden okra from Stabilo, which is that lovely, yellow tone that I used at the base stage. So again, just using the side of my lead here, very, very lightly. We don't want to erase the hairs as such. We're just softly kind of blurring them. This is also just helping to get rid of any grittiness. So the Caran d'Ache white, it's brilliant, but it's also, it's a little bit gritty when it comes out. So you can either just tap the paper to soften it and just blur that grittiness, or you can use the side of the lead if you want to tint areas like I'm doing here. So again, just in the areas which are notably yellow in the photograph.
and then one more layer of white to finish this off just to make sure that some of these curls are popping just like they should be in the photograph. And mainly the ones on the right and some tips in the middle as well. And then finishing off with my dark okra, I've just zoomed in for you here so you can really see these curls up close. I'm just using this to tint those areas that I mentioned are more yellow, but just using another additional tone in that's different to the golden okra and the sienna that I just used. So just in a few areas here, this is a lovely, vibrant, deep yellow tone, which is perfect for these curls. And that is my method of creating curls for you, which I hope you can then apply to a pet portrait. I will, as I mentioned, be pulling together a full cockapoo portrait. So that will be coming this year for definite, but I will let you know in advance of when it goes live. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you next time.